Hi students, boys and girls. I am Dr. Anurag Agarwal. Today, I feel immense pleasure to announce that OSN Academy Private Limited is going to start the IES Mains English Literature Batch for even 2019-2020 for those students who are preparing on a Pan-India level. I know that students who are searching for English literature study materials, English literature classes may not be getting that level of expertise which they might get under my guidance as I have been teaching UGC NET and IES mains since 1998. So I have already made few lectures on Victorian age, Tempest and today this lecture which I am going to present is Thomas Hardy and his test of the Dever Bellies. Always remember students that history of English literature is of utmost importance to write answers in your IES mains. Without the blending of, without the knowledge of history of English literature, it is not possible to attain very good marks. So I would advise all those students who are watching me, who are planning to for IES mains in the near future, may get in touch with me if they like the lectures, if they like all these sample lectures which I have been taking for the students to make them understand that how I am going to teach them, what is the quality, what is the details and etc. So students, first of all, I would like to share with you some minute details about the life of Thomas Hardy and then continue with tests of the Deber Valleys. On June 2, 1840, the sun rose with more brightness. The summer wind grew more warmer. The tree leaves in the Wessex whistled more loudly because he was born who is his life loved them dearly. The king of Wessex was born of old Dorset stock at Higher Bocampton, a hamlet in the parish of Stinsford near Dorchester. His Christian name was Thomas and family name was Hardy and thus he became Thomas Hardy, the name which will never be forgotten by the coming generations. His father was a mason, though he enjoyed a good social status sometime, but now in the district his position was not very high. A buoyant and kindly man as his father was, he was interested in music and was often invited in the village festivities to sing. He loved his village deeply and therefore never left it. And this devoted musician reared up no ambition in his life. Thomas Hardy's mother was certainly ambitious. She was very fond of reading and wanted to give the best education to his son. And this stimulating woman had a very grand memory and out of her biggest talk, she would often tell beautiful stories to her son. Thomas Hardy owed much of his wisdom to his mother. But for love of music, love of literature and nature, he was surely indebted to his father. Thomas Hardy played a trick at the time of his birth. He lay quite breathless on the bed of his mother. Doctor declared him dead. And the old nurse, though pale and baffled, did not lose her sense and went on slapping the child. And the departing soul of Thomas Hardy returned and for the coming 90 years refused Pluto to accompany him. Really, God's ways are mysterious. Who knew that the child who was not willing to come upon this earth would someday glorify it? And as a child, he would do nothing except wandering in the groves. He was very sympathetic even when he did not know the meaning of sympathy. He would come out of his house with a fiddle in his hand, would wander and wander and would never return till it was dusk. 
his father did not object him roaming education can be started later let him enjoy was his mandate about thomas hardy and the child would go on chatting with trees and in nature and in this love of nature one could see the love of low living even animals once he became a sheep and got down on all his fours and began to mouth in the grass and the sheep grazing near were looking with wonder at this new and strange addition to their community with the growth in age his love for nature became intenser and deeper and deeper and before entering the gate of school his mother had produced in him an appetite for the education and the result of this inspiration was that when he was 16 years of age he had a good and profound knowledge of latin greek and english literature greek testament iliad and many plays of sophocles and aeschylus were read by him in the school life his mother left a lasting influence on thomas hardy she was his teacher and his guide he had read dryden and dr johnson when his formal education was begun in the class he was the tiniest child with the biggest head and in brilliancy ready wit grasp of knowledge he surpassed everybody in the class and he never spoke with his students and yet he wanted to know all about them out of sheer love of human sympathy acting upon the advice of his parents he daily walked the 6 miles distance to the school and to the astonishment of his teachers and class mates he went on improving in his health and his frail body went on putting flesh never allowing him to become fat his father had a friend john hicks who was an architect hardy the boy of divided interests was himself unable to choose any career and hicks solved the problem and took him as a pupil he was a sincere and a liberal teacher and after his training hours he allowed hardy to enjoy with his literature and with the imposed education to architecture self education of literature was running at full speed hardy lived in the house still and daily walked from bockhampton to dorchester and in dorchester lived william brains who was a poet and a next door neighbor all the intellectual problems of hardy were solved by this man the admiration and the affection for this man hardy could never rub off from his heart these were the very happy days and he enjoyed all the lives together the professional life the scholar's life and the rustic homely life horace mule who was his fast friend sometime his class fellow was now a classical scholar of queens college cambridge it was after so many discussions with this gifted man that hardy won the riba prize for an essay on the application of colored bricks and terracotta in modern architecture and when hardy used to draw pencil lines on drawing papers he wrote beautiful words in meters on those papers and the poem he sent to the publisher but in spite of their blunt refusal to publish he went pouring his heart ceaselessly and during his busy hours he was acquainted with miss emma gifford the sister in law to the rector of saint juliet and miss gifford was fond of singing painting and riding though not very beautiful she was handsomely attractive and she had a fancy for hardy hardy wondered on her choice because the fellow suffered from inferiority complex anyhow he was married to emma and the woman who married hardy in her fit of sentiments and despite the over brimming love of hardy they could not enjoy a peaceful married life and the differences which arose between them were never settled hardy fulfilled her every will and once she asked him to give up poetry and to infuse that much interest in prose fiction all our praises and thanks are due to this woman who herself did not love hardy but made us all love him and respect him
It was she who made him a novelist. And the first novel written by Hardy to obligate her was The Poor Man and the Lady, which was rejected by George Meredith, the publisher, and was never produced in future. Hardy did not mind the remarks of George Meredith and giving head to his advices, wrote another novel, Desperate Remedies. It was published but proved an utter failure too. And then came his first successful novel, Under the Greenwood Tree. And the reviewers received it well and Tinsley, the publisher, worked hard to popularize it. For he was convinced that it was a good novel. And Hardy was paid 30 pounds for it. His own self began to peep in for the first time in a pair of blue eyes. And in the meanwhile, his friend Horace Meol died. Hardy was profoundly affected by it. In 1887, he and his wife, he and his wife uh, traveled together in Italy. And the next year, they returned and settled in London. 1888 was the year when Tess was written, but its publication became very difficult for its unconvincing plot. Moreover, people at that time did not want tragedies. Dismayed and bitter, he sent his novel to the third editor who accepted it. His father died and so did his wife. Melancholy and sorry fate of man began to dominate over him. And when he was 74, he married once more. This time, though his bride was only 35, it was a complete union of taste and temperaments. Though Hardy could not love her as he loved the first, she assisted him in every work. And it is said that the wives are the young men's mistresses, companions and nurses in the old age. And so she proved a real companion. In July uh, 1910, the Order of Merit, the Order of Merit was conferred upon him. And on 16th November 1910, he represented the freedom of his native town of Dorchester. After leaving the English literature, rich in novels and contributing it to many poems, two dramas and a peculiar taste, he left it in the hands of generations in 1928. It was the dawn of the day and the dawn of the new year as well as that he died. He was buried by the side of his first wife in Westminster Abbey in the presence of a rural congregation. And on his 81st birthday, he was presented an address which read as Kya likha hai uske 81st birthday mein? In all that you have written, you have shown the spirit of man nourished by tradition and sustained by pride persisting through defeat. So these are the few beautiful lines which are written on his 81st birthday as presented an address. Now, students, after going through a brief detail about Hardy and his whole life and his contribution to the field of English literature, the students of IAS and even UGC net and other competitive examinations of English have also to know some of the major works of Hardy so that while writing their answers, they can incorporate their knowledge with giving them the answers that yes, you have also the knowledge of other novels and works as well of the particular artist to the particular novelist. It will take hardly one minute, but yes, it will be very beneficial for you. If we talk about the Hardy's other works and if we segregate it in the terms of tragedies, then it is the return of the native, the mayor of Castlebridge, Tess of the Debervilles and Jude the Obscure. Then if we uh, take the name of tragic comedies, then it is desperate remedies, a pair of blue eyes far from the madding crowd and the woodlanders. Only if we take the comedies, then it is under the greenwood tree, the hand of Ethelberta, the trumpet major and the well beloved. If we talk about the short stories, it is Wessex Tales, a group of noble dames, a changed man, the waiting supper and other tales. And he was also a great poet. 
in the name of Wessex poems, poems of the past and the present, etc. Then a very important poem, the name is Satires of Circumstances. This has been asked many times in the net paper too. Satires of Circumstance. Then drama ki agar baat kare, to Dynas, part 1, 1903, part 2, 1906, and part 3, 1908. And apart from all these details, he has also written a lot of scattered contribution to periodicals. His famous novels are the Under the Greenwood Tree. So finally, we come to his Test of the Dever Valleys, which is the part of the syllabus of the IS aspirants. So students, Test of the Dever Valleys, which is subtitle hai, A Pure Woman, written in 1891, is a story of a girl who suffers at the hands of the inflexible code of morality. She is cheated because she is innocent. She is not forgiven because she is sincere. Throughout her life, she tries and tries and tries, but she cannot bring the circumstances in her favor. At last, what happens? Death comes to relieve her of all the troubles. She is Tess. Jack Derby, a poor haggler of Marlott, was returning from the town of Shaston after selling his eggs. And this frail and weak supporter of the family of eight members is met by a priest, Parson Tringham, on the way home. And he tells him that he is the lineal representative of the ancient and the knightly family of the Tess of the Tiber Valleys, and therefore he should be addressed as Sir John. And this sudden shower of respect which he deserved turns his head and he starts drinking. Tess was the eldest daughter of the Derby Wye, Derbyfield family. She being asked by her parents to go to the old lady of the Deborah Valley family at Trantage, goes there to claim kinship and a job at the poultry. She falls a victim to the voluptuousness of Alec D. Uh, Alec Deborahwell and the spoiled son of the blind old lady. Tess returns. And in the due course of time, a child is born and soon he dies as well. To stand upon her own legs, she accepts a job as dairy maid in Talbot Tays. There she falls in love with Angle Clare, the youngest of the three sons of Reverend James Clare, a well-known earnest vicar. And unlike his two brothers, Angel is refused the university education because he loved humanity more than the divinity. He wanted to live in the human being and not in the church and therefore in learning different works of a good farmer. And with the passage of the time, the love of Tess and angels prospers and angel proposes to her. Tess is a very sentimental girl. Her past is always before her and she th thinks herself to be ignoble and wants to expose her history to Angel before the marriage. She drops a letter in his room, but the letter is misplaced. And even on the day of marriage, she wants to confess her faults, but in the hustle of marriage, Angel won't listen. And inspired by the story of Angels being involved with the aged lady, she opens her heart. Angel does not forgive her. And deserting her, he leaves for Brazil. So students, this is the storyline which I am trying to give in front of you in a very shortened manner, which will give you that yes, for writing the answers, you have to be very perfect in the storyline. And this storyline or Hardy has to be known with the history of English literature. So that when you write the answers, you can actually manipulate it well, telling about the, uh, the, the period of that time too. So the whole story uh, is, is not to be taken here because this is just a sample lecture for students who can understand that what they are going to be taught by me. Suppose the question comes in the IES mains, discuss the title and the subtitle of the novel, Test of the Dever Valleys. Or they can even ask, quote-unquote, a pure woman. 
is it a appropriate title than test of the deber values so you have to now prove this question with the standard of ies level so i'll just brief you that how we can start and how we have to incorporate this answer with the title with the question which is given first of all we can say that thomas hardy though thomas hardy had been in the habit of giving romantic names to his novels yet he sometimes gives them simple names in the names of his most significant characters and his romantic names are very appealing but individuals or the character names are not far behind mostly romantic names are culled out of the poetic expressions as far from the madding crowd a pair of blue eyes under the greenwood tree but some of them share expressions of the ideas like the two on the tower the return of the native and on the other hand those novels that bear the names of the dominating characters or heroes are very few but only these novels have won an unending fame for hardy these novels are the instruments by which he had become able to circulate the philosophical theories in the society the novels like the mayor of casterbridge in which hencher dominates jude the obscure in which jude is all in all and tess of the dever belia story that starts and ends with tess to name the novels in the name of its dominant characters is not a new method it has been a very common literary convention students and this method is very useful for the readers to guess before reading the theme and the plot of the novel as tess of the dever belia gives an idea that plot of the novel has something to do with the tess of the dever belia and that it must be a story of a girl whose name is tess and to judge the appropriateness of the novel we shall have a glance over its plot it is a story of the luckless daughter of john derbyfield who heard whose head turns at the news of his coming of an ancient family of debervilles and again you have to students write the same story which i have uh, just a few minutes before explained to you ki kaise kaise kya hua aur kaise kaise uske sath tragedy hoti rahi aur kaise kaise usko pareshan hona pada life mein so we see that it is all about tess it is she who dominates the hero and all others it is she who breathes in every page and it is she who sake all his lengthy novel is written and all the persons come into tess life tess does not go in others lives all the events are to make an effect on her life and all the coincidences are created for the mirth and the melancholy of tess and the story starts with her dance in the open club of marlot and ends with her death in the great city of uh, uh, Win, uh, winton uh, chester and the story of the novel marches ahead in the narrations about tess it takes a different turns in her actions and it comes to an end with her own end so in this way we have to write the answer to prove the question which is asked in the exam agar hum ye kahe सब टाइटल के बारे में तो देर इज अब टाइटल विच इज बिंग रिटर्न अ प्योर वुमन एंड विच इंडिकेट्स लाइक ऑल द सब टाइटल्स ऑफ हार्डी द थीम ऑफ द नॉवल इट टेल्स दैट द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द नॉवल इज प्योरिटी ऑफ अ वुमन हु इज अ मॉरल मैन हु इज अ मॉरल वुमन वॉट इज अ प्योर कैरेक्टर वॉट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ गॉड्स एंड वॉट इज लाइफ are some questions which are solved in this novel and the subtitle hints to them all and the question whether tess or a pure woman is a better title is solved when we have studied that one stands for the other so these are two aspects of the same character or rather than two names of the same persons one name is a proper noun and the other is a abstract noun therefore both the titles are appropriate and either of them can do the job of tilting the novel so students i can give you certain more questions which i teach in my classes to the students for practice like tess of the debervilles is generally regarded as thomas hardy's masterpiece what are the main characters of the novel tess by thomas hardy 
what is hardy's philosophy of life as expressed in tess of the dever valleys it is said about hardy that all his novels are ballads in prose how far it is correct in the case of tess of the dever valleys tess is the victim of inflexible moral law an inexorable social code or even they can ask give a character sketch of tess of the dever valleys quote and quote a novel is an impression not an argument and there the matter must rest now elaborate this line with a reference to the novel tess by thomas hardy so students if you have done your graduation or post graduation or in english or even if you have not done your graduation or post graduation in english english can be your cup of tea for ias mains in english literature only if you have a love of literature if you can can go deep into the world of literature if you can have the pleasure while reading the novels pleasure to enjoy literature pleasure to write to communicate and to understand different literatures so it is a subject which has to be handled with precision it is a subject which has to be handled with love care and taste so students to end up my lecture so in case you wish to travel along with dr agarwal if you wish to make your dream come successfully with this subject then osn academy and dr agarwal is always with you thank you